This week, a conference was held at the Interdisciplinary Center in Israel, featuring the subject of online journalism and the evolution of this medium. In recent years, the world has started to grasp the power available to the masses using the Internet and, more specifically, digital media. Traditional media is apparently no longer the sole outlet to turn to when wishing to acquire news. Social media has become a tool for many individuals to get their voice out into the world, while at times having their voice be the only source of information the public obtains. After all, journalists cannot be everywhere all the time. This was apparent over the last year or so during the recent Arab Spring uprisings. One of the panels held at the Digit Online Journalism Conference in Herzliya included media professionals who gathered to discuss this great impact that citizen journalism has had on the world, but also pointed out its limitations. When you have people who are taking pictures with their cell phones and with their iPads and with their, uh, you know, recording everything and sending things in, these are the kind of images that you couldn't have because you wouldn't have access to those places. Um, but the reason you wouldn't have access to those places is because those places aren't uh, open to the media and aren't democratic to begin with. Um, so for the same thing, I think that it's an important tool that people use, um, but it has to be treated with a grain of salt and not taken as the gospel because obviously whoever is bringing that material to your attention has an interest in doing so. Bashar Assad's dad killed 10, 20,000 people um, in, in um, suppressing an Islamic revolution 30 years ago. And we all thought that you couldn't do that in this day and age because you wouldn't be able to keep it under wraps. Well, everyone knows what's happening in Syria right now. There's, you know, I don't know, a thousand people being killed a month and the regime hasn't fallen. And the pictures are coming out and the mobile phone footage is coming out. We know that they're killing these people. We know that the president of Syria is massacring his own people. Social media is telling us and yet the regime survives. So I think it's at the moment something of a lesson in the limitation or the limits of the power of social media. Uh, and, and maybe we, we exaggerated the capacity for social media to change you know, everything. The rise of citizen journalism, people broadcasting their own stories, pictures, and videos has impacted news gathering as well. News bureaus are now constantly faced with editorial decisions dealing with the credibility of the materials they receive. I don't know how many of you have seen the images that went out last, last week on YouTube of the man apparently being buried alive in Syria. Um, Reuters did not cover that. We were aware of it. Um, we carried out quite careful checks on the footage. Uh, we carried out audio checks on the footage. We decided that the audio sounded wrong, that the voices were on a too similar level to be picked up properly by a mobile phone. We thought there would be a, a difference in, in the audio levels. Um, we asked about the accents of the people involved. We were not convinced that it was um, credible and we did not write about it. Maybe we were wrong, but we do try and check all this stuff coming in. With the world slowly becoming one global community via the internet, some people think that social media will eventually replace the traditional media. Whether this happens or not, one thing is for sure. The realm of journalism has taken a turn and we haven't seen the end of it just yet. For JN1, I'm Sivan Raviv, Israel.